hello. We are continuing with our survey of the national birds of uh, Latin American countries. And we are here uh, continuing with the Caribbean. The tr this tray here has uh, national birds of uh, most, uh, we're missing maybe a couple of the uh, Caribbean islands, and I apologize for that. Uh, so start here with the northern, with the Greater Antilles and the island of Cuba. Uh, Cuba selected uh, the trogon. This is a beautiful uh, species uh, and even has the colors matching the uh, Cuban flag. Mm, mm, the Cuban name uh, is Tocororo or Tocororo. Uh, that's uh, onomatopoeic. The bird actually does have a vocalization that uh, sounds like this. and. Uh, the tail is entirely unique. Uh, there is no trogon species with this sort of nicely carved tail. Uh, and the related species of trogon is found on the island of Hispaniola. Uh, so here's the Hispaniola and trogon. This one uh, was chosen as a national bird by the country of Haiti. And there they call it Caleçon Rouge or Calçon Rouge. And uh, here, uh, this is a male and uh, uh, same as with the Cuban trogon uh, species that uh, is found in forested but more open uh, habitats uh, and nests in tree cavities, uh, sometimes uh, abandoned woodpecker holes, and uh, relatively common. Both species are still in, in good shape, uh, not endangered. On the same island of Hispaniola, the country of the Dominican Republic, uh, Republica Dominicana, uh, chose uh, the palm chat to be their national bird. And the reason for this is that this is really part of the landscape, one of the most common birds. I recently visited uh, the country of the Dominican Republic and got to see them everywhere. And their nests, their massive fortresses of sticks that are communal nests uh, found throughout the country in, on telephone poles and in trees, but mostly in palms, uh, sometimes even on rocks. I have seen nests. Uh, and this uh, bird is a unique, uh, kind of enigmatic phylogenetically. It's closest related to North American waxwings, uh, but it's a single member of its uh, family. Uh, so it's a good choice for a national bird. Then if we move to the next island to the east, uh, to Puerto Rico, uh, uh, this bird, the Spindalis, was chosen as a national bird. Let me see. Uh, it's called Reinita Mora in Puerto Rico, or Reina Mora, or Sigua, another name I found. And uh, in English, it used to be called striped-headed tanager for obvious reason. It has a lot of stripes. Uh, but now we know that it's not really closely related to tanagers. It's a unique uh, Caribbean lineage. And there are four species on different islands. Uh, and this one is endemic to Puerto Rico. Then moving over to Jamaica. In Jamaica, this uh, gorgeous hummingbird was chosen as a national bird. Uh, it's uh, called by Jamaicans Dr. Bird or Dr. Hummingbird. Uh, I'm not, I couldn't find a good explanation for this name, but uh, uh, it, the male has spectacularly long uh, tail and in flight must be a pleasure to see. Uh, and b strangely enough, uh, birds in the eastern part of the country have black bills and the rest of the country red bills. This one here is a bit faded, but it used to be a red-billed bird. And female is uh, without these uh, ornamental feathers in the tail and, and a little bit smaller. But it's still a common bird, not endangered. Then uh, uh, let's maybe look at, oh yeah, maybe here the parrots. So three different Caribbean countries, uh, insular countries, chose parrots for their national birds. Let's maybe look at this one first. This is the largest of the member of the genus Amazona. Uh, imperial parrot, appropriately named. And this uh, great bird is uh, endemic to the island of Dominica. Uh, and there it's called, it's called Cicero. Uh, it's an endangered species. Uh, there are only fewer than 200 individuals left in the wild and not too many in captivity. So uh, this one has to be watched and uh, cared for, managed carefully. Uh, the neighboring island of uh, St. Lucia chose their own Amazon, uh, totally differently colored, uh, but still quite colorful. And also, it's not very common. Let's see, the, the name uh, they chose for it, uh, the local name is uh, Jacquot, uh, or Jacquot, I'm, I think it's Jacquot. Uh, and in this case, uh, there are fewer than 500 birds left in the wild. 
And both of these birds are uh, in the mountains, in the interior of the island. Uh, so hopefully inaccessible and hopefully the habit will be preserved. Uh, and then the third uh, of these Amazons of the Caribbean, uh, this parrot here called St. Vincent parrot uh, on of the island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, uh, has two different color morphs, green and yellow. And uh, uh, here we have uh, a representative of the green. And uh, these birds are a little bit more common, not as endangered as the other two I mentioned before. Uh, but still, it's a relatively small population. Uh, population is small island and a little lower in this case, not in the mountains. Um, uh, then uh, we go to island of Aruba, where interestingly, uh, two birds were chosen for the national bird. First, it was the shoko, locally named borrowing owl subspecies, endemic to Aruba. And uh, uh, the second one, more recently, uh, this little parakeet, brown-throated parakeet, uh, which there is called prikichi, uh, probably onomatopoeic, probably after the call. And I guess the reason for this switch was to bring attention to this bird that maybe is in uh, more need of conservation, and uh, that's why the country brings attention to it. And finally, oh, no, not finally, but uh, we are traveling further south. Uh, this is now Trinidad. Uh, and two birds uh, here because Trinidad Island uh, has the scarlet ibis chosen as their national bird and uh, the island of Tobago uh, has this uh, chachalaca. This is uh, one of the guans, the chicken-like birds and this one is called rufus tail tailed, uh, ruficauda in Latin. Uh, because of this nice uh, rufous tipped uh, tail and also the belly is chestnut colored. Uh, this uh, specimen is maybe not the nicest. Uh, the ibis uh, is a common sight throughout uh, Trinidad and uh, it's a marsh bird uh, nesting in big colonies and often seen in flocks uh, traveling from the feeding grounds to, the, to their nests. And I then will move to these two big birds. So the island of Barbados and the country of Barbados, uh, let me see here chose the brown pelican as their national bird. So here maybe actually this view. This is a species that is uh, pretty widely distributed, not only in Caribbean islands, but also in south southern uh, United States. And uh, it's a colonial nester that, uh, I mean, everybody talks about egg thinning and uh, endangerment of the ra raptors, but uh, this bird also suffered quite a bit in 1950s, 1970s from the use of DDT and uh, from uh, the pesticides and egg thinning. And finally, here is the bird uh, chosen by the country of uh, Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, and this is the magnificent, magnificent frigate bird, uh, sometimes called man of war. This is one of the seabirds uh, famous for its uh, behavior of stealing food from other birds. I can steal fish or uh, some other Oh, but they can also catch their own fish. They can, for example, snap uh, f uh, flying fish from the air. And this um, bird here is a male. In life, this would be a bright red inflatable sac, and the males on the breeding grounds would inflate this uh, to attract females. Females don't have this uh, inflatable sac. And I will end by saying that uh, one cool kind of record that this bird also beats is that uh, frigate bird's skeleton is uh, lighter than the feathers. If you actually plucked all the feathers and combined them, the skeleton is so pneumatized and so light fused that it's uh, lighter. So that's a pretty good choice also for the national bird. <laughs>